Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Tenenbaum. And I am Dr. McCadden. And we are here at West County Plastic Surgeons for our Tuesday night edition of Facebook Live. Tonight, we wanted to chat with you all about something that has been kind of a hot topic in the media lately that involves breast implants and can be a little bit scary. Um, so we want to really provide you with the facts as we know them about an entity called Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma, or you may have just heard ALCL or BIALCL, Breast Implant Associated ALCL. So we are going to try and clear up um, some facts to the best of our ability, kind of try and explain to you what it is who should be concerned about it, uh, what you should do if you are concerned, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Great. So, so why don't you yeah. tell us what is ALCL, yeah. breast implant associated ALCL? Yeah. So, so hi everyone. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just give you sort of the known facts about it and we'll kind of sit here and uh, look at questions and we've had a couple of mailed in throughout the last couple of days. So, so breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma ALCL is a type of a uh, it's a type of cancer. It is not breast cancer. It's a type of lymphoma, meaning that it's a it's a cancer of white blood cells, and specifically, it is a T cell lymphoma. So it is a uh, a T cell, which is a type of white blood cell cancer. There's different types of ALCL. There's primary cutaneous ALCL, systemic ALCL, which we've known about for years and years. And the World Health Organization recognized the breast implant version of it as a distinct entity in the last couple of years. Um, so, so what's the deal? So first of all, who gets it? So what we know is that all cases of breast implant associated ALCL, um, where we know what type of implant the patients have had in the past. In every case, the patient has had um, a textured breast implant at some point. So meaning there are no cases where somebody, that we know the history, where somebody has only had smooth surface breast implants. So let's just back up for one second, just so everybody knows, breast implants, there's lots of different kinds of breast implants. We talked about this a little bit when we talked about breast augmentation. So what he's referring to is the surface of the implant can either be smooth or it can have certain types of textures. Um, there are also different shapes of implants. So round implants generally can be smooth or textured. And the teardrop shaped implants currently are all textured implants. Right. And so, um, yeah, so sometimes people equate ALCL with silicone. It's got nothing to do with that. We've seen patient with a saline implant but had a textured surface who had ALCL. But it is also just that around the world, um, outside of the United States, saline breast implants are rarely used. It's almost all silicone. In our country, there's a little bit of a higher use of saline. Um, and so that's also a part of it. A lot of these cases are silicone implants, but that's simply because silicone implants are far, far more popular worldwide than saline implants. But as Dr. McCatton said, we don't think the association has anything to do with the fill of the implant. We think it has to do with the, the surface of the implant. Right. So, so other things that we know, so the majority of cases of ALCL that uh, develop usually develop somewhere in seven to 10 years after the implant was put in. Um, I believe the earliest uh, case was around 18 months, but that's really unusual. Um, some people ask us about tech, uh, tissue expanders. There's only one case that we know of where somebody had in, a the world. in the world ever, where somebody had a texture tissue expander that developed ALCL. So that would be extraordinarily rare. Um, so, you know, seven to 10 years uh, after uh, this implant is placed, a uh, patient will notice um, in probably about 70 to 80% of cases, what's called a seroma or a fluid collection. So typically the breast was normal and then just sort of all of a sudden in a couple day period, the breast will get a lot more swollen. Um, if that happens um, and you see a doctor about it and they're 
not worried or not mentioning this to you, you need to come to a board certified plastic surgeon who's familiar with this. Um, and then they would do a series of tests. Um, essentially, they draw the fluid uh, out and then they sample it uh, for a, a very specific battery of tests. Um, so there's a specific uh, set of findings uh, with labs that will show that it is uh, ALCL. Now, probably around 20 to 30% of cases will present with a mass. Um, and so that mass can also be biopsied and also, uh, it, it, it may also have these characteristic findings. Um, should be noted that um, in the majority, 70 to 80% of cases of women who have ALCL, it's completely treatable surgically. So that means that uh, the breast implant, the capsule that surrounds it needs to be entirely removed and that that's uh, curative in the majority of cases. You'll see that online and in some of the scientific journals and meetings called an on-block resection. Um, so that is when somebody has ALCL. Um, I should know, you know, occasionally we'll have patients that come in with other um, issues with breast implants and they'll request an on-block resection. But to be really clear about this, the really the only time when an on-block resection is needed of a breast implant and a capsule is when the diagnosis of ALCL was made. So if somebody sampled the fluid, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's ALCL. In fact, most of the cases, it's not ALCL. And so the fluid is sampled, it's not ALCL, you don't need an on-block resection. You should probably have your implant out and get that fixed, but that's different than, than having ALCL. Now, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, let's um, back up just a minute. And um, I know we have a lot of questions um, through Facebook that asked, we already touched on texturing. Um, but so there are a lot of women around the world and in our country and here in St. Louis who have textured breast implants or have smooth implants. Um, what should they be thinking about and how, how common or how likely is it that something like this is going to happen to them? Yeah, so, so in women who have a textured breast implant, so it gets more complicated because within texturing, there's different types of texturing. Um, so uh, there's a type of texturing called BioCell, and that is the type of texturing that the current uh, Allergan breast implants have. And um, that is also, you'll, you'll refer to it as uh, macro texturing as well. And so essentially these breast implants, um, they, they, they have this kind of gnarly surface on them. Those implants are the ones that have the highest uh, association with ALCL. Um, in uh, Denmark, the association with ALCL is around one in 6,000. Um, in 6,000 women who have textured yes. breast implants, not one in 6,000 women. Correct. In, in um, the United States, a couple years ago, they said it was one in 30,000, but there have been more cases. So we predicted somewhere in one, one in 2,000 to one in 3,000 women with the biocell textured implants. It, so just to clarify, so nobody gets too scared, um, if you have breast implants and they're smooth, generally that's not something we're terribly concerned about. If you have breast implants and they're textured, especially the biocell texturing, which happens to be Allergan, which is the brand name. Somebody else asked a question about particular brands. So Allergan uses the biocell texturing. Your risk of potentially developing this ALCL associated with your current implant is about probably, as he said, around one in 3,000. So to put that into context, your risk of developing breast cancer simply because you're a woman is one in eight. So the risk, even if you have a textured implant, is still very small. Yeah. Um, somebody asked uh, just on this, uh, just they didn't see at the beginning, what is ALCL? So ALCL is a T cell lymphoma. So it's a, a blood cell or white blood cell cancer. And it stands for anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And there is a version of this ALCL associated with breast implants, textured breast implants. That's what we're talking about. 
Um, and again, just to reiterate also um, that it is when he says associated with the implant, it's confined generally to that implant. It's not actually in your bloodstream like an ALCL might be otherwise, um, especially when you catch it early. So um, let's let's jump ahead again to kind of what women should do. So all women who have had breast augmentation or breast reconstruction with, with implants or any type of breast implant surgery should know that breast implants are not lifetime devices and usually at some point they need to be replaced and they should be monitored. So regardless of your concern for ALCL or not, even if you have a smooth implant, you should be seeing your plastic surgeon on a regular basis. So every year, every two years, whatever that means, but you should be following up with your plastic surgeon on a regular basis. If you're over age 40, you should be getting mammograms annually. Uh, and most importantly, if you notice any change in your breast, like swelling, he mentioned that the majority of, of an ALCL will, pre will present with that fluid collection or seroma. If you notice something like that, if you notice skin changes, if you notice a mass, if you notice anything different about your implants, you should be calling your plastic surgeon right away so that you can be evaluated and they can help determine what the best next test is. Yeah. Um, and so the, uh, the other thing about this is when would chemotherapy be needed for ALCL? So that would be in uh, probably about 20% of cases uh, where chemotherapy or immunotherapy uh, would be required to treat it. But that in context, so you're talking about a fifth of cases of something that happens in one in 3,000 women who have a very particular type of breast implant. Um, so um, an, another thing is if, um, if you have concern as is stated or, you know, a lot of physicians still don't know what this is. So it is important, I, I can't really stress that enough, uh, to see the plastic surgeon, either the plastic surgeon that put in the breast implant or a plastic surgeon that you know is a board certified or familiar with. This yeah, a board, a board certified plastic surgeon who is a member of ASPS, American Society for Plastic Surgeons, or ASAPS, American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. Those are our two main um, national societies. And we've, as a, as a group, we've really done a lot nationally to try and educate ourselves and educate each other and the public about these entities. And so really we are the, the experts in this. And so as he mentioned, if you call your primary doctor or your gynecologist, they, they really may not have ever even heard of it. And so you, it, you just, you really need to be following up with your plastic surgeon, your board certified plastic surgeon. Yeah. Um, that's a good, great question. Um, thanks Jen. So is it more or less likely to get, uh, ALCL if your implants were done for reconstruction versus augmentation? Yeah. So, so the answer is it appears to be just as, uh, frequent in both. So in other words, when they've looked at like the uh, sales of these breast implants, whether it be for reconstruction or for augmentation, the uh, number of cases reflects that. So um, th there are a few more augmentation cases, but there have also been more of these implants overall placed for augmentation. So the rates are about the same. Um, yeah, so that, but that's a really great question. They, they are, so there's a couple of theories as to what causes this, and part of this is uh, genetic and it's some sort of a change or a, a particular aspect of somebody's genetic makeup and how that would interact with these uh, textured surface implants. Um, at, at this point, the, the, what that is, we're, we're not really sure. They're looking at something called the T cell receptor. And they're also studying um, the, the other forms of anaplastic large cell lymphoma that are more common that are not associated with breast implants to see uh, what uh, similarities those have to the few cases of breast implant associated uh, ALCL that have come up. So that's being actively researched. Um, there was... Pat's on. Oh, hi, Pat! <laughs> Um, so fun to have you here. Feel free to chime in. Yeah. Um, so 
Really, um, you know, I'm, the good news is we are learning more and more about this all the time. And the, the other good news is most of us, like I said, board certified plastic surgeons, members of ASPS and ASAPS really know how to treat this. And so if you are seen in a timely fashion, this is very curable and it sounds terribly scary, but it's very curable and we can really help you. The bad news is we don't know everything yet. So as Dr. McCatton just mentioned, there probably are groups of people who are more susceptible to it than others, and, and we don't know that yet. And so at some point in the future, we hope to be able to determine before a woman would receive any breast implants, whether or not they might fall into a category where they might be more susceptible to developing something like this. And then they can make a choice to not have um, breast implants. Um, either for reconstruction, there are other options for reconstruction, or for cosmetic purposes. So I, I think that that's really good news. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, I think it's really imp important to put this in context. So we're not minimizing this whatsoever. It, it is a real thing. Um, but at the same time, it's also a very rare real thing. Um, there's a lot of other things, honestly, that can go on with an implant that are not this, like a leak, like a capsule or contracture, like the implant not being in the correct position. Uh, we talked about a delayed seroma. So um, um, we, we know from other studies that about 1% of patients do eventually develop a delayed seroma, but there are at least 10 times or more of those patients who don't have ALCL. Correct. That, that's absolutely true. And we, we've all had those patients. So if you do develop swelling and you call us to be evaluated, of course, on our mind is going to be, let's make sure this isn't an ALCL. And we're going to go through the proper channels for testing to make sure that uh, we know exactly what we're managing. But in the majority of those cases, it's not going to be an ALCL. And so um, that's also important to know. Um, the other thing I wanted to address, um, I don't think we said this yet, so we talked about knowing that this is associated with a textured implant, and in particular we think it's more highly associated with um, biocell texturing, which is Allergan, although certainly it's not exclusive to biocell. There have been cases of ALCL with Mentor implants, Allergan implants, Sientra implants, as well as some other uh, European um, brands that are not available in our country, so it's not exclusive to Allergan or BioCell, but we certainly know that's more common. So what should you do if you have one of those implants? Should you have it out? Um, the answer is we don't think so. So currently the FDA and most plastic surgeons are not recommending that you have your implant out um, just to prevent this necessarily. We, we're, we're more trying to educate you on, on uh, what to do if something were to come up and how we would treat you if something were to come up. Because again, as he mentioned, if you have a textured breast implant, your risk of getting this is probably around one in 3,000. So that means 2,999 of you will not get this. And so we're not necessarily recommending you have it out. That being said, it's your body and it's your choice. If you want to have them out and either have them out and be done with it or have them out and have them replaced with a smooth implant or something along those lines, certainly that is an option that you should discuss with your plastic surgeon and come to a decision that makes you feel the most comfortable. But we currently do not feel that there is, that it's necessary that we're going to recommend you have them out at this time. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah no, I agree. And, Pat, you know, do you agree? <laughs> uh, with every, um, you know, every month we're having more and more research, there's a, um, a special issue of our national journal, I think that's coming out in February or March, that looks into this. and. Certainly plastic surgeons are really alerted to this and, and you know, concerned about it. I want to make sure that we, um, it doesn't continue to happen. There are newer implants that are on the horizon and tissue expanders in particular as well that um, are available or becoming available soon that um, will also address this with either no texturing or a different type of texturing. So, so there is definitely work being done to try to um, get past this. But the truth is, whenever there's a new medical device, um, we don't know what, it, how it will impact every person 10 years from now. Um, there's always, and that's why there's, you know, so many trials and that's why there's so much work that's being done on this and why these devices need to continue to be evaluated over time so we can learn more about them. 
But at the same time, the alternative of no device it is a real problem. I mean, breast implants and, and women who have um, would benefit from them from a self-esteem perspective, from women who've had breast cancer and would benefit from them from a um, perspective of a reconstruction. I mean, the benefits of these breast implants certainly far away some of these risks, um, but they're, you know, the reality is there's no perfect scenario. So we have to balance the risks and the benefits for this. Yes, that's a great point. Um, as Dr. McCatton mentioned, there are a lot of benefits. We, in our literature, in our scientific literature, in the plastic surgery community, we have a lot of great uh, articles and studies that have been done showing that breast implants from the cosmetic side as well as the reconstructive side can really improve quality of life. And um, we don't want to uh, downplay that. That's important. So we certainly don't want to see breast implants being taken away from American plastic surgeons as a tool to help women in this country um, either be reconstructed or um, make a choice to feel better about themselves. Uh, so we're trying to be really careful about this entity and be really responsible. So again, I'll reiterate, you should be following up with your plastic surgeon regardless because you have a device in place that isn't meant to be there for a lifetime. So you should be following up regardless um, on a somewhat regular basis. But again, especially if you notice any changes, find your board certified plastic surgeon. Also, I will also say um, if for some reason you've had ALCL or know somebody who's had it, it is important that we learn as much as we can about it. There is a national registry from the American Society of uh, Plastic Surgeons called Profile. So um, we also need to learn more about this. So um, if for some reason you know anybody who's had this and um, isn't registered, I think it'd be great to, to encourage them to be registered because we can also, since this is so rare, um, it's important that we, we uh, learn from every case. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, feel free to share this video. Hopefully you found it educational and you learned something. And um, feel free to share it and feel free to ask more questions. A lot of you watch this later. You don't watch it live. And so if you have another question that comes up, go ahead and send us a message and we will do our very best to answer it. And we can do another Facebook Live to be even more specific. That's right. We can follow up. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.